guys, this is Shelby with Rogers Public Library. So this week for Full Steam Ahead, I wanted to talk to you guys about clocks and watches, right? Um, so clocks and watches are both timepieces, right? And the main difference is the size, right? This is um, a clock that I partially disassembled that I'm going to um, show you guys in a little bit, right? Um, it's big, it sits on your desk, um, and this is a watch, right? It's very tiny, um, it goes on your wrist like this, right? Where sometimes um, people keep watches in their pockets, or at least they used to before we had cell phones to tell us the time, right? So the, these um, these two clocks work the same way, right? They have the same interior parts. The, the difference is just size, um, but that hasn't always been the case, right? Um, for a while, watches and clocks work really, really differently, but we'll, we'll get into that in a second. Um, so first, right? So basically, the way that all clocks work is that you have to have a a period, I guess. Um, you, you, if you know how long it takes for something to happen, you can use that to measure time, right? So if you've ever seen an hourglass before, right? These, this is came uh, from a game of Boggle, um, or it's the same glass, right? It's a, or a minute glass because it takes one minute for the sand to fall from the bottom or the top chamber to the bottom chamber, right? Um, and so early clocks were, were like this, right? There's um, sand, um, sand glasses and um, what are called clepsydra or maybe a water clock the way you've heard of, right? So this is the one that I've made and calibrated. And, and when I say I calibrated, I mean that I poured water into the top reservoir and I used my phone to tell me how long it took um, or, or where the water was after a minute had passed in two minutes and three and four to five, right? So this works as a regular clock, right? So you can do this with any um, sized um, plastic bottle, right? You'll want a grown up to cut it for you, right? Um, just you have the top piece and the bottom piece. Um, and then you'll need a thumbtack. So I'm going to poke a hole in the lid. You might want to get a grown up to do this for you too, right? Um, because you can't poke yourself with the thumbtack, but um, it, it's safer to you, do the thumbtack method than to try um, using like a nail or a drill or something. That's just an accident waiting to happen. All right? Um, but that really is all there is to it, right? You put it like this, and then you get um, a watch or a phone with a with a stopwatch on it, um, and you just time, and you see how long it takes. Um, let's see. This is almost to the one minute mark now. Let's wait just a little bit longer, see if it gets there. Okay, yeah, so it's been about a minute, right? Um, it might not have been a whole minute in the video. I'm mean, asked for a couple of reasons. One is that water is kind of finicky. Um, water, um, ha it, it's a fluid and it has a viscosity, right? That's how fast or slow it flows. I um, mean, the viscosity changes a lot oh, with different temperatures, right? So if it's very warm, the water will flow more fast uh, or faster. And if it's cold, then the water is going to flow more slowly. Um, right. So that's one thing. The other thing is that um, water can cause erosion, right? Not just so like sand or rocks or whatever. Um, it can also kind of eat away at the plastic. And eventually over time, the tiny um, pinhole will get bigger. Um, and so the water will flow um, quicker, right? Um, right, so there's um, some limitations to these guys, right, is that while you can use a, um, a sand glass or a water clock to tell how much time has passed, um, you can't look at one of these and say, oh, it's um, 1230 or 1245 or something, right? It doesn't do that, right? It'll just tell you when a minute's up. And the earliest way to do this is really a sundial, right? So it's basically like a circle, kind of like this, um, with a do down right here right so if it's right above there's no shadow right because um and it's new um but depending on where the sun is in the sky the little doodad will cast a shadow and it'll um and that will tell you basically how long the sun's been up or how long it has until it's gonna um fall again right um and so there's some problems with this right uh so sundials don't work at nighttime I mean, they don't work when the sun's not out. So if it's like it's raining or it's cloudy or, or whatnot, right? Um, and but so really, um, for a really really long time, um, water clocks 
not necessarily like this one, but more complicated, um, um, more engineered water clocks were the best way of telling time. Um, up until like the 13th or the 12th or 13th century, um, when we get mechanical clocks, right? So mechanical clocks are really similar to this one, right? Um, it uses a set of gears to basically, um, right, count minutes and hours and days. Um, and the early ones didn't really have faces, right? They just um, dunk. Um, like that to tell you the time. Um, right, and clock faces are newer in uh, um, development, right? Um, early clocks weren't super accurate either, kind of like um, water clocks were, um, or early mechanical clocks weren't, right? Um, and then we eventually get something called a pendulum, right? So a pendulum is kind of like this, right? It just sways, and the amount of time it takes to get from here to here depends on how long the pendulum is. For the most part, that's like the only thing that matters, right? So you have a pendulum of a certain length, it's going to swing um, once per second or maybe twice per second, right? Um, and you can use that to set a clock um, and get it to keep time accurately, right? Um, and so pendulum clocks are really the most accurate types of clocks we had until like the, um, I guess the 1920s, um, which is when quartz clocks were invented, right? And that's what's in this, right? A little teeny tiny crystal of quartz which is, you know, um, silica. Um, it's kind of like a white crystal, um, really similar to sand. Or it's the same element as sand that you find on the beach, but it's been um, kind of um, synthesized so that they're high quality, right? Um, let's see. Right, so there's actually a little quartz crystal in this, and there's one in here. Um, and they vibrate at ex or more or less... Um, 32,000 times a second. Um, there's an exact number that I can't remember. It's equal to uh, 2 to the 15th power. Um, but that's what makes quartz cut so accurate, right? So a pendulum swings only once per second. Um, this thing swings, or you can think of it, it swings like um, 32,000 times a second, right? Um, and so you're measuring uh, a lot. You're measuring the important number um, more often. And so it's going to be more right, I guess you would probably say. Um, and like, you know, this is, I have no idea how accurate this is, right? Because I took it apart. I haven't been using it, but this one's pretty accurate. I measured it earlier. Um, I set it a week ago when we had daylight savings time. And it was about a second off. Now it's four seconds off, right? Um, so it lost three seconds over the course of a week, right? And that's really good, right? Um, I don't know about this one. Um, and we're not going to find out how accurate it is because we're going to take it apart a little bit more. I took the battery out first so that I wouldn't have to worry about, um, you know, I'm shocking myself, which, right, it's a battery. It doesn't produce a lot of electricity, but that is a concern, um, especially if you have, like, say, a... Um, Um, kind of clock that plugs into the wall as opposed to a battery powered one, right? Because that gets a lot more electricity. Here we go. We took it apart. Um, and it's okay, right? Once again, um, it's okay for me to do that because I bought this and it was $2 and my parents don't care if I break it. But if you do this at home, you're going to want to ask your parents first, right? Because um, they might get really mad at you. So we got a lot of really cool stuff in here. We have gears, right? Just like in basically um, every clock um, from the past seven or 800 years. Um, the difference is these are made out of plastic. I think there's a couple of different kinds of plastic. Um, I can't identify them I'm just by look, right? Um, right, and then we have this. Um, this is the copper coil, it just, um, right, so the, the electricity runs through the copper coil, right, and that creates a magnetic field. Um, and then there's this guy, right? This is the important guy, um, the most important part, um, the quartz. And it's connected to a motherboard. 
Can I pull it out? Maybe not. Okay, right. So this green thing, this is the brain that tells the um, the rest of the clock. Uh, or, or it's the thing that counts how often the quartz crystal or vibrates and that tells the clock when to tick, right? And then this little silver doodad right here, that's the actual quartz crystal, right? Um, and you're probably wondering why the quartz crystal looks like a metal container, and that's because um, the quartz crystal is inside the metal container, right? Um, and that just, that's so that, um, right, it's not going to be affected by dust or moisture or anything that could... Um, change its frequency of vibration right and that, that just keeps the clock more accurate um and on really really accurate um timepieces used in laboratories or stuff uh, of course crystals are actually kept in like special sealed containers that are temperature controlled because that that helps them be even more accurate um yeah so that's our clock and um, we had a lot of fun breaking um and i guess uh there's one more type of clock that's worth mentioning that's a nuclear clock it works really similar to a quartz clock, right? You measure um, the vibrations, but instead of measuring the vibration of a quartz crystal, you measure the vibrations of a cesium atom, right? Um, so cesium vibrates about 9 million times a second as opposed to, to 32,000 times a second. So it's a lot more accurate. Um, and actually nuclear clocks are more accurate than um, like the sun's rotation, right? Um, so the earth, the, 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 it doesn't, when the earth rotates around the sun, it can actually vary by like very, very, very small amounts per year. Um, and we're actually able to detect the discrepancies in our orbit around the sun using nuclear clocks, right? The nuclear clocks are more accurate than the earth, uh, earth's rotation around the sun. And so we have to add like nanoseconds to the clock occasionally just so that we'll be on time, um, so to speak. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's what I have for you guys this week. Um, I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. Um, and I'll see you next time.